Here is an example that involves displacement and distance traveled. And here we have, well, we have motion in three-dimensional space. If we look here, we are starting with velocity. Okay. And the first part, part A, we want displacement. This is what well, we would integrate from zero to two of the velocity dt. And this is, well, we're integrating this function, which has three components. Now, how do we integrate a vector? Well, we integrate component-wise. And perhaps I will remind you, this came from um, the first week of class. If we integrate e to the at, we get 1 over a e to the at plus c. So we will do that in two of the three components. We have something of this form. So here we have minus 1 half e to the minus 2t. And then we integrate the second component. And this third component is a constant. When you integrate a constant, you get a constant times t. And then we evaluate this between 0 and 2. When we evaluate at the upper limit of integration, we get minus 1 half e to the minus 4. We have 1 half e to the 4. And then we have square root of 2 times 2. Subtract off, evaluate at the lower limit of integration. And the thing is, Um, e to the zero is just one. So you have minus one half, one half, and then zero. And now this is a difference of vectors. And you subtract vectors component wise. So this will be one half minus one half e to the minus four. We get um, one half e to the four minus one half. And then the third component is square root two times two. Okay, this is the answer to part A, displacement. Displacement is a vector. Very nice. Now, part B, there is no integrating in this. We just need the speed at time t equals zero. Well, first of all, the velocity at zero. Maybe I will start with this. Velocity at zero, we have velocity as a function of time. Just evaluate at zero, one, one, and square root two. And the speed is the magnitude of velocity. So here, the speed, this is a square root. And we take each component and square. So this would be one squared plus one squared plus the square root of two squared. Um, this looks like four underneath the radical. Square root of four is two. So the speed at time t equals zero is two. Part C is total distance traveled. The first thing we need, well, let's calculate the speed as a function of time. And then we will integrate from zero to two of the speed. Well, what this is, we already have velocity. So we just square each component. We have e to the minus two t squared plus we have e to the 2t squared and then the square root of 2 squared. As we know, the hard part in these problems when we're calculating distance traveled or arc length, the hard part is simplifying what's underneath the radical. So let me just re re rewrite this in a different way. This would be, I'll leave this and then plus two, and then here, e to the two t squared. Now, this is a square of something. What's under the radical is, okay? This is the fun part of this problem. This is what creates the challenge. You see, I'll show you what I see, and then we could check. What I see is here and here. Why would this be? Well, let's check, right? If you did the firsts, 
you would get exactly this, e to the minus 2t squared. If you did the lasts, you get here, e to the 2t squared. But then think about inner and outer. When you multiply these two, e to the minus 2t, maybe I will put this as a note, e to the minus 2t times e to the 2t, this is e to the 0, which is 1, OK? And so the inner and the outer are both 1. And when you add them together, this is how you get the 2. So this underneath the radical is, in fact, a square of something. So now if we integrate, we are going from 0 to 2 of the speed. This is 0 to 2. It's just this, e to the minus 2t plus e to the 2t dt. Because, well, this part is non-negative. So when you take the square root of this squared, we get back exactly this. And now this is something that is not too bad to integrate. It's much simpler than if we started looking at this and started thinking about integrating because we have simplified. We have minus one half e to the minus two t and then plus one half e to the two t. And all of this we want to evaluate between zero and two. This is minus one half e to the minus four plus one half e to the four. Now subtract off evaluating at t equals zero. Oh, we're going to have a positive one half and then minus one half. Altogether, you see we get one half e to the four minus one half e to the minus four. This is our total distance traveled. And this is certainly a non-negative number as we know it needs to be. The distance traveled will always be a non-negative number. This is part C. Okay, maybe I'll zoom out. This is the end of this practice problem. Thank you.